Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Far Eastern Soviet Republic lover. And right now, I'm just like, I zoomed over here, and just, this caught my eye. This is, this is so sad. Look how divided Africa is. It'd be cool if there's one, they could all just join one state, like Spain, and just become one country. But anyways, you know what, we have the Congolese Republic, but we have the Congo State, but we also have the very cool, popular Republic of the Congo, so... These are the cool guys. We really like them a lot. But, last time, we created the Socialist International, but no one really wanted to join. And it is, of course, Ju June 7th, 1969. Uh, we've taken about 1,300 casualties. We've killed off 2,000, 2,100. Um, they're not really attacking us yet. They will soon, I'm more than certain. So we're going to just do, like, general little, little pokes, maybe-ish. See what we can do, maybe, if we can do any damage. No? Okay, then. How about we hang out, then? Oh, oh, no. Oh, they threw in more guys. That's not attack them. Let's hold on and uh, hang out. Because it looks like they're going to throw in more divisions against us. We'll see what happens. We've lost six. Jesus Christ, 6,000. That's so many. Holy crap. Okay, let's actually move in. That should probably be very smart to do. Um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. we got to just be very careful down here. That's all we got to do. we just got to be very, very, very careful. You should be able to win there, right? Beat up on the small guys. That's what we got to do. That's what we always got to do. Hey, better rifles are very good. Let's see. Can we get everything else up here? More defense would be nice. One comment was saying, um, uh, what was it? Authoritarian Soblin. Authoritarian Soblin or Realistic Soblin is the most wholesome Soblin. Well, some might agree with that. Some might uh, not agree with that, but that's okay. We have a little map. Look at that. Oh, oil crisis soon. Yes, oil crisis. We do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm as well, though, but empower workers organizations. Yes, please. Absolutely. I guess could go in there. That'd be awesome. Early industrial robotics is very good as well. It's not quite 1970 yet. Let's get some better planes eventually. I think that'd be very useful. Hello. Not today, sir. Not today. There you go. Uh, 8,000, not great. I'm, I'm just a little surprised that they're not attacking us at all. I'm very surprised. With the number of divisions that they do have... Oh, they're only 27. So that's not too bad. Oh, if you wonder about improved academic base, please go ahead. That is something to be celebrated. Absolutely. Oman's killing itself. Very nice. Um, honestly, I'd rather have you down here. Just so that we can actually like do an encirclement here, maybe. Because that'd be quite good as well. Uh, Ilya. Oh, this, yes, yes, yes. Anything else? Invest in construction. Yes, please. Get some better motorized. Get some more better this stuff. That'd be so good. Do not show again. I think we already know how to do this, probably. By the time this video goes up, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know how to do pretty much most things. Not everything, but most things in... Point four, but I could be very wrong. I could be incredibly wrong about that. Like this. Is there a river here? It looks like there's a river here. I could be wrong, but it looks like there is a river. And nothing, nothing over there. It kind of sucks, but whatever. Small incremental attacks. Can we have upgrades as well? Yes. But nothing do we. Is there anything we want? Not really. No. Good. Republican victory in Yemen. Who cares about Yemen? Oh, poverty. Yes. Yes, more weekly manpower would be very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now the casualties are slowly evening out, but not very much. Not by much at all. Oh, so bad. Oh, it actually came over there. Look at that, not bad. All right, so we got the two divisions. Hopefully we can do pretty darn well. We'll send you in. You support the attack. You should be able to win. And kill off... Oh, look at that, two divisions. Oh, yes, please. I don't panic, hopefully. And we do have the mod installed as well. The second West Russian War, so we will in this episode hopefully get down there. Hell, oh, I, oh, I told you to go, huh? Oh, and you're still not going. That is peculiar. But now the calories are much more equal, and by much more equal, I mean much more favorable to us. I kind of want to do general attack, but that'd be so wasteful, so incredibly wasteful. I still attack Bratsk if we possibly can. Now there's definitely a river there. Nice, there you go, good. I thought we actually took that place earlier, but whatever. Alright, not bad. Not bad. We do a little bit of man manpower, but, uh, planes. One, two, go right there, and one goes right there, too. Nice. Alright, not bad so far, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Initial propaganda campaigns, might as well do all the stuff we can while before we hit to the last stage. Before we try to take over a certain Teuton. <coughs> Alright, you guys go here. I'm sorry, it's just got to be this sort of slowish. Just so we can beat these. Why don't you just attack? 
We're not going to win everywhere. Ooh, Terra's attacking Italy. That's not good. Hot Ottomans. Well, that's not good. That's good. Over there. Uh, I thought they had more divisions than this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, they got a lot of manpower. This is what uh, this stuff does. Conservative democracy. Yeah, democracy right now. This is why you got to have an authoritarian-ish government to make sure the revolution succeeds. Because look how weak these democracies are being. Incredibly weak. And keep boosting them both up. Thank you. 20,000 versus 64,000. They have less divisions than us, most likely. And that's a great thing. A truly, truly, truly great thing. I want you to beat these guys up. So what you just go over here. Go as far as you can. See what you can do. Yeah, I thought we wouldn't be able to do this, but okay. Higher important structures. Oh, yes, please. Um, yeah, we did that stuff. We reunify as well. We close out of this because there's nothing there. Overall, not too bad. Really not too bad. Agriculture is improving rapidly, which we like to see. We have mass mechanization already. And losses, what, 30,000 for us about-ish? 80,000 losses for them? Obviously, we got a lot of manpower stuff still. Yep. Hey, everyone, about that was great. A boon to be sure. More more speed, less supply consumption, more construction speed. Oh, yes, please. Even though we're out of manpower, which is not very good. I did want to get tanks too, so we'll get there eventually. At this point, I don't think they can really beat us. Look at that GDP, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it makes, it makes me feel so good seeing that. Uh, supply wise, we need more tanks, but let's get. Oh, we lost the junction. Well, that sucks. Happens, you know, happens. Hey, Egypt, goodbye. Nice. <coughs> Excuse me. There you go. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Don't give up the attacks. You're doing a great job. They have less... Oh, they a good way towards capitulation already. I love it. 120,000 losses. Of course, never enough. And our loss is not looking too bad either. Oh, a little bit of lag, but that's all right. Happens, happens, happens. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Don't give up yet. You ain't done yet. Want some brotherhood. Oh, are these guys expanding? No, we're actually doing really well here. Yeah, it just takes time. This is just Siberia, man. Not even once. Huh, Orenburg is still alive for now. That is peculiar. So we have Bonachenko. And we have Batov. Oh, I don't want to fight him. I hope that Samara basically wins. Basically Samara. Samara. Whatever the name is. Oh, you went into a circle, huh, boy? Not today. Let's go down here. Huh. <laughs> Beat them up. Nice. Anything else? Nope. Oh, actually, improvisation of experts not too bad. So we're going to make a lot of divisions for once we get core like all of Russia. We're going to make a god-awful amount of divisions just because we need to. Because when fighting Germany, you got to also keep in mind that Iran might join them. And they have Norway as well. So we need at least 100 divisions on the front line against Germany. At the very least. Kemerobo will be very good as well. Please keep going, guys. Keep going. We've only lost 50,000, 53,000 versus 150,000, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Even though I would like to increase a social development, too. Oh, that's not bad. Five a month is not bad. Political interference is not terrible. Because we're close to becoming a professional army. Come on. Keep... Oh, yep. I asked and we'll receive. Yay. Son, no. Actually, you both go in here. We're going to try to encircle us, but whatever. I don't care. Doesn't matter to us. We'll crush all of our enemies. Just, just make as many as you possibly can. Nice. Up to 20 divisions now. Oh, wait. How close are they? They're 80% there. 80%. If we get to Tomsk, they're pretty much done, so. <coughs> Good Tokyo standoff. Very, very nice. Valerie Salvin and Valerie Salvin. Nice. Hey, everyone, about that, please go ahead. Yay, better consumer goods, more resource efficiency gain. And invest in scientific research. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, finally, basic jet fighters. Oh, so nice to have. Seven billion in deficit. Eh, it's all right. We need to make as many divisions as possible, so just, just spend. Just. Hey, we won! 
To the skies, my friend. To the skies. Let's go and core everything we can immediately. We don't have a lot of political power left, but that's alright. We already did everything we can, so. Siberian reunification! Oh, uh, we haven't fully reunified yet, so there you go. Look at this. And go and extra influence here. Wow, look at that manpower. We didn't even, did we core this stuff immediately? No, we didn't. Oh, please, let me make more. More. Oh. But, you know what? Because of the right side, it's almost always, not always, but almost always, the exact same thing. If you want to read about the Into the Atomic Age, please go right ahead. We're going to nuke those Germans into the dustbin of history, but in Lenin's footsteps. We have brought ourselves from the furthest frozen shores of Lake Baikal, all the way to having a dominion over the entirety of Siberia, surely. If Comrade Lenin could see all that we've achieved, he would be proud. Still, we must continue to cement a rule and perfect our governance in, in order to reunify the motherland and spread a revolution all across Russia. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. Yay! Um, you know what? <sighs> Technically, we are demobilizing, which sucks. But we have a good amount of equipment. It honestly might not be enough yet, though. Uh, let's just keep it for now. We'll be fine. I don't want to cut it yet, so. We, we unify the... Ah, reunify. And region development is done. Unfortunate. I kind of just want to take him out. If we can't, I probably will just take him out. Make it easy on us. Empower the Nep. I like that one. Oh, we'll get more political power. Even though political power doesn't really have too much of an effect now, but we can still use it, so. I'll also grab it first. As we move to develop Siberia and unite, reunite all of Russia under Soviet rule, it's important that we hold tight to the principles of party vanguardism. The all union communist party must retain and even expand its role in the governance of the state. This is the only way for a revolution to survive and flourish. We had a decision there, but no longer. Oh, we're losing. Wow, 0.77 political power every single day. Jesus Christ. But now, look at that manpower. Nice. Very nice. In Lenin's footsteps, Comrade Salvin, the Krasnoyarsk riots have been successfully suppressed. The police officer said, as he entered the office, giving Salvin a fold of papers. Was anyone hurt? Salvin asked, turning around in his chair to face the man before him. No police were killed in the action, though four were injured by an improvised incendiary weapon thrown by a rider. Their panicked comrades were then opened fire on the crowd with their submachine guns, and although they were dispersed, six civilians were reported to be killed in the aftermath. Salvin stood mouth agape at the news. You were dismissed, comrade. The officer left the room. Salvin poured out a glass of vodka as he read the official report. The workers were demanding a return to increase council autonomy. After several days of battles with the police ensued without any attempt to yield to the protest before the incident occurred. He put the papers down and looked at the portrait of Lenin above his desk. He thought of the chaos of the Civil War, of the arrests of striking workers, the riots in the countryside, and hundreds of counter-revolutionaries turned tortured and killed so viciously to preserve Lenin's rule. But in the end, he prevailed, Salvin thought. The road to socialism was fraught with enemies, and strong rulership was needed to survive these difficult times. He wouldn't even commit a single percent of the crimes of those dark days, and the road to workers' liberation would be cleared for him. Of that, he was certain. It is, of course, of course, for them. And if you wonder about established closed facilities, please go ahead. Because I do want to get that... That's nice and all, but I do want to get the uh, research. Extra research is always nice to have, so. Mm, that's not bad. Export focus is kind of crazy. No, that's not bad either. I mean, I'll do, we're going to do all this stuff anyways in this episode, so. Not too worried about it. And then two days left. Empower the party. After that, if you want to read about a foundation for research, please go ahead as well, because I won't get that research done as fast as possible. I, I just want to take them out. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Slow is 1%. It sucks. I guess we can do this as well. I think that'd be really good to do right now, but I do want to go to war with Kazakhstan as fast as possible. Because how strong are they? Third of a million manpower? Yeah, look at that. Just, I'd rather have that manpower under us, with us right now, so. Not bad. Nice. Good stuff. Keep getting more... More and more good stuff. More research. Yes, please. <coughs> very good, very good, very good. One, two, three, four, and a sum. Awesome. Keep making more civvies. More civvies, or more more bueno. 0. 0.71 is not great, but that's okay. And a foundation for research. Yes, please. <sighs> very good stuff. Ooh, a little bit of lag here and there, but that's all right. Empower the nap. Eh, let's do that one. Yeah, why not? No matter where we have brought under revolutionary rule, the circumstances have always been different. The territories of Magadan and the Amur were under the rule of fascist warlords, while Central Siberia has seen ultranationals and feudalists hold sway over the years. Clearly, the transition to socialism will not be a quick thing. Instead, we should use industrial programs of the new economic policy and the Siberian plan to bring all of our territories to comparable levels of growth and development. Actually, no, screw it. We're going to boost this up anyways. It's going to hurt the budget, but who cares? 
We need as much output as possible because I will rush out divisions eventually. Mm, tanks would be nice. That'd be very nice, actually. Improved anti-air. Uh, go back to three, maybe. See how that does. But that's alright. We, we definitely need more cast. Ooh, we need more rubber. You know what? Get our own fuel. Why not? Oh, because we can't research it. God dang it. There you go. <coughs> nice. And when it's 1971, then we can go to war. Order 44. Yay! It is down to this. Yay! We love Order 44. Destroy Monopoly? Yes. Oh, hello. Spending and making into our small business. The abolition of capitalism is beyond a shadow of a doubt our priority. However, we need to balance our ideological ambitions with the need to build our economy in the near term. As such, it is acceptable for us to permit the formation of small businesses in local communities. There won't be any private conglomerates formed on our watch, of course, but small worker-owned enterprises will help to build wealth and develop our territories. Get some academic base. That'd be very, very good. Follow it up with... Oh, that's not bad either. But, war on homelessness. Poverty would be very good to get rid of. Or at least work on. This is that one. War on homelessness. Homelessness is a tragedy on the individual level and a blight on societal one. While our construction programs may be helping to ameliorate the problem, we need to ensure that the vagrants of Siberia always have a place to stay. In some cases, that might mean establishing temporary shelters. While in others, families may have to accommodate more people than expected in their homes in the end. It'll be worth it. It'll be all worth it for where we are going, my friends. Even though we're out of manpower now. God dang it, that sucks. Alexei's Pirozki shop. Alexei could not contain his joy, as today was his day his dreams came true. As he waited in line to register to start a new private business as part of the new government initiative, allowed limited private business, his mind was going wild with excitement. Ever since he was a boy, he had been wanting nothing more than to share his mother's delicious Pirozki recipe with the world. Now that she was no longer with them, now four feet underground with her beloved husband, he felt the best way he could honor her memory would be to share her delicious food with the rest of Russia. Near the front of the line, he managed the store, a sign in front saying Alexei's homemade Pirozkis. Perhaps a young boy or two to help him work the store, children and adults like alike streaming in to get a taste of his sweet treats. Watching them leave with smiles and jam spread across their faces, it was going to be everything he dreamed of as he finalized the details of his business reg registration. He can help a grin like a madman. His patients would become famous, he dreamt, imagining the people coming from the nearby towns, and perhaps one day in a unified motherland, all across Russia. With enough work, perhaps he would be successful enough to open another store in another town. Perhaps his son, just three years old now, would carry on his legacy and would retire to the countryside, assured, and assured his Pirozkis would continue to serve the people of Russia. Clearing out from the bottom floor of his house to create a restaurant space, he saw it laid out in front of him. He could picture over there a, a booth, over there some chairs, a few standing tables, maybe even an outdoor seating for the hot summer days. The sky was the limit, because for the first time in Alexei's life, a story was truly his, and that is a great feeling. A true story of Russian, the Russian dream. Destroy monopolies. While we may be permitting the formation of small businesses and cooperatives, we must make it clear that mon monopolistic capitalist practices have no place in our union. We should investigate local landholders and business owners to make sure that there are no nascent monopolies forming. This way, temporary concessions to the market will not become permanent blocks of capital. Look to Bukharin. Uh, replace the doubters, a true red army, yeah, and part of the revolution. So far, we've come so far, but there's still a long way to go before all of Russia is unified under the banner of Lenin. West Russia remains under the rule of reactionaries. To say nothing of the fascists and the collaborators who still hold court in Moscow, our union must prepare itself militarily and diplomatically for the struggles which have only just begun. Yes, please. Thank you. Early cast, better cast. Uh, we could trade away stuff, but eh. We're going to go to war with these guys anyway soon. Uh, give me just one thing of this, then. And I'll go two. Just hopefully so we can make some. It ain't much, but death to monopolizers. Alexei's homemade Perovskis have met some hard times recently. Excitedly, he had charged too little at first and found himself uh, having to raise prices. Taking small loans from friends and a business was worse than ever. Recently, a man had come to him. An entrepreneurial and snappy type, dressed sharply and talking quickly. It promised him quite a large sum of money, but not as much as he had spent on the store in exchange for the ownership of the store. He said that he said no at first, but the second time the man came around, he had seen no, he had seen no choice but to give it to some more serious thought. Alexei simply could not afford to run the store much longer. Now, the man came around a third time. However, this time he came around the block, escorted by several police officers with his hands cuffed. Alexei could not help but run out and ask some of the ones trailing behind what, it had been, what he had been arrested for, given his relation to the man. The police officer responded, this man is guilty of monopolizing. He was caught trying to buy out a store around the street and was caught and when a kind old woman told us of the man's actions. Alexei was speechless, the man had been conducting illegal activity and had tried to involve himself in it. Racing back inside, Alexei felt a newfound burst of confidence for his business. In the following days, he worked tirelessly on banners, recipes, 
and business skyrocketed. By the end of the week, he had paid back substantial amounts of his loan and found himself laughing privately to his wife about how foolish he had been to consider selling the store. Surely enough, his per Pirozkis became a favorite in the town. Any who stopped by were directed his way, and his store became a staple of the community. Selling hundreds a day, he continued to live frug frugally, preferring to spend his money on improving his store and helping others. If the monopolizer had been allowed to roam free, none of this would have been, would have been possible. Hooray for Alexei, the ideal store owner. A truly red army. We found ourselves in control of vast swaths of territory, and vast new populations as such. The challenges of the Red Army faces remain daunting. Morale and discipline must be enforced, or reinforced, if we want to be a power capable of reunifying all of Russia. The Army's political commissars will be given additional duties, and the power to carry them out. Training may, may need to become harsher. This will make things difficult for new recruits in the short term, but if that is what it takes, then that is what we will do. Our motherland's defense demands nothing less than a strict dedication. Why do we get this one done, too? Uh, it's going to be a while before anything better. Uh, an oil crisis, but we don't care, right? We we don't care. A grim duty. Combat schooling? Oh, yes, please. Some within our government might say that victory is worthless if we lose our souls in the process, but if we lose, we have no souls regardless. Us the Red Army must do what is necessary to achieve this final victory our revolution needs. This means increasing training, obtaining more resources from the state, and if need be, turning a blind eye to the excesses that may result from war. Perhaps it is not moral, but if our revolution was built on morals, it must be sustained by action and defended at any and all, of course, costs. Build, 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 you son of a guns. More building. When in doubt, you're going to build them all on out. Cool. The Soldier of the Union. Uh, the 78th Battalion gathered at the training grounds early in the morning, as uh, they always did. The commanding officer went through. Uh, the usual inspections and gesture for a group of soldiers to bring forth multiple boxes filled with books. The men of the 78th Battalion made no verbal complaints, yet each of them silently doubted their own officer's intuition. Were they not soldiers? <clears throat> well, this not a training ground, for the past few weeks they've been through the same routine, daily routine, of physical training and learning military theory. And of course, they've read a few manuals during training about a book. The officer picked up one of the books and displayed it to the soldiers. Its, plain, its cover was plain, the only image adorning it was a black hammer and sickle, and above the title, State and Revolution. The officer quickly looked over the battalion and began speaking. Comrades, I can see that you are very wary of a disruption of your usual training, but a disciplined mind is just as important as a disciplined body. You'll each receive a copy of Lenin's State and Revolution, and you'll read through it as part of your training. The men who brought the box began distributing the books to the rest of the soldiers, and they were dismissed to begin reading. Without revolutionary theory, there can be no revolutionary movement. Increase international outreach. As we expand our territories and power, it is vital that we put more effort into our foreign policy. Obviously, the first candidates would be social states, such as that of Cuba, but we also need to reach out to the OFM. They may not be the friendliest towards Soviet-style socialism, but they, as allies against the reactionaries of Europe, they will be indispensable. Would you look at that. Soviet armor has come alive. Hmm. Fireman, Soviet. Actually, this, this area here looks like it's going to hit quite a bit, so. Nice, there you go. It ain't much, but we'll take two more percent. Friends in America, the U.S., as a so-called defender of the free world, can be our strongest ally in the fighting to come. We should send a diplomatic message to them, making it clear that we want to establish further relations, perhaps economic, material, military, aid will result. It is in both our strategic interests to engage in this way, and Washington will undoubtedly recognize that. Absolutely. Ten trillion billion, whatever, what matters is a revolution, so. Yes, the pushy scientists? Yeah, we could, why not? <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, we won! Look at that. And now I regret getting that stuff done. Increase international outreach. Valerie Salpin has officially announced the creation of a foreign office for the Siberian Socialist Republic, citing the need to improve cooperation between the workers of Siberia and those who stand in solidarity with us abroad. The foreign office will be accepting delegates from all nations sympathetic to our cause, their cause, through a preference for socialist nations was stated in a speech. Messages from the new foreign office invited them to send envoys to the capital have been sent to socialist nations around the world and to the OFM. Workers of the world unite! Uh, apartment construction programs, why not? Oh, look at that lag. And many of the cities and towns of Siberia, years of war and strife have prevented the construction of the housing stock that hundreds of thousands of needs. Ameliorating this should be done, or should be, one of our most foremost goals as a government. By investing in the construction of new apartments and major population centers, we can ensure that one of the most basic needs, shelter, is met for all of our people. The structures won't be gilded palaces, but they'll ensure that everyone has a roof over their heads and a dignified place to call home. Here, go and start doing that. I should not have spent stuff here, but whatever, it's totally too late. Actually, such an international. Is anyone here? No. There's, no. there's literally nothing there which sucks, but whatever. 
the rule of the collective will be, of course, next. One of the main principles of the original Soviet Union's government was collective leadership. That is, duties and responsibilities are being distributed amongst the members of the executive government. This way, no one person can amass a cult-like level of power, and accountability and dissent can improve governance instead of dragging it down. Empowering our government committees and encouraging internal discourse will likewise help us to expand and, of course, thrive. Go and train as well if you need to. Ah, uh, yes, Iraq, thank you. Um, that's not bad, but still. It goes to replace the doubters. There are some within the government, and even within the highest ranks of the party, who believe that their union is moving in a direction that is far too hardline. Olenovskaya and Petruro, as, as is their right, have called a meeting of the Central Committee to discuss the possibility of reform. It's imperative, however, that we not let up. A few complaints cannot stall our revolution. Absolutely not. More authoritarian socialism? Very good. Rule of the Collective. Comrade Sabin, the results of the election for the Yakutian Workers' Council are in. A woman with brown hair said as she is handed a uh, woman with brown hair said as she handed Sabin a paper. All you have to do is sign at the bottom and the winner will be inaugurated as head of the Workers' Council. Who is Arbe Degrakov? asked Sabin. Uh, Degryakov is the leader of the Yakut Miners Union and is an active member of the ASSR's Workers' Council. For the past few years, Degryakov has been very active at opposing the centralization measures and supports local autonomy. I don't believe he's part of the party. Selva shook said, No, that won't do. We need to be united if we were to survive the capitalist onslaught, and we can't have outside sectarians tear this country apart right now. Get the local party officials to vote on it. The secretary sat down and began to type Salvin's orders down in a typewriter. As he heard the clicking of the keys, he sighed. It was difficult ignoring the will of the people so blatantly. However, there was nothing in the Constitution saying that he couldn't do this, and Russia had to be united and centralized for the workers to prosper, he thought. At the end of the day, it was all for the workers. For the workers and celebrate party democracy. The all-union communist party is a, is a cornerstone of our government, and its existence assures that our, the transition to socialism is guaranteed. Under our system of party democracy, governance is distributed amongst those who have shown themselves to be both mer uh, meritorious and willing to strive for revolution. There are structures for transparency, accountability, and efficient government action. This is something to be celebrated, but not decried. Let us uphold democratic centralism and party democracy, which will carry us forward with, un towards unification and... Revolution? Reply to doubters. Mahib, we are socialists. It is the workers' responsibility. Not ours. This isn't about keeping true to the ideals of the October Revolution, Olenovskaya. The simple fact is that if we want to put bread on the table, we need central, organized planners who can make sure the workers' councils aren't starving this country to death. Salvin watched as a debate over centralized planning turned into a shouting match. Enough was enough, he thought. Bran and Mahiv have a point, he said. We need extra oversight to ensure the councils have enough quotas. That's two, three to two, and according to the democratic socialism, that is the final decision. Do not discuss this question further. Do not discuss this, discuss this question further. Comrade, you used to be better than this. You want... Pachuro was suddenly interrupted. Comrade Pachuro, not only are you violating democratic centralism, but this is the third fight you've begun about policy in a month. Continue your sectarian tendencies and you'll be relieved of duty. Do you understand? It was Salvin's turn to shout, and unnatural silence descended on the room as he did it. So, after what felt like hours passed by, Pachuro began to speak once more. Yes, Salvin, I understand, but I've listened to... I have no interest in further participation in this committee. Pachuro replied as she exited the door. Olenovskaya nodded her head in agreement and followed Pachuro out. After the meeting, Salvin was one of the last remaining three to leave the conference room. Pachuro's words echoed in his mind, you used to be better than this. She was right, but it was for the October Revolution that he had to make such sacrifices. He was forced to fire his closest comrades by necessity. He couldn't help it. Tears welled up in his eyes as he began to sob in the empty room. The sacrifices to defend the October Revolution are great. October Revolutions... Authoritarian socialism, pragmatic statesman, nice, more political power. We're going to lose a lot of consumer goods. Holy crap. Look to Bukharin. Under Bukharin's rule, the Soviet Union aimed to use local development and industrialization schemes to bring the nation out of the backwards feudalism and explo exploitative monopolistic capitalism. While our circumstances are not identical, our economic policies and initiatives should follow that same spirit of economic development and reconstruction as we build the base needed to reunite Russia. Absolutely. Uh, let's start getting that one, too. We have 900 manpower. Never mind. We did have 900 manpower, but whatever. It is what it is. Cool. The will of the party. Yevgeny Sokolov had never moved from the city of Magadan. And yet, he had, by his count at least, been under five separate regimes. At 60 years of age, he'd seen Tsar's rise and fall, the presidium be purged and purged again. The Russian fascist party stormed the Far East. Only to be driven out again, of course. But under none of these regimes had he seen a ballot, and not once he had had the opportunity to vote. 
when the General Secretary Salvin's forces swept through the city of Magadha. He had no reason to expect a change in this pattern. And as he walked past the polling station, he saw the guards checking those queued up to vote for the party membership card in, turning anyone without one away. He sighed as the guards shouted for the crowd that had formed to disperse, warning them that all voting was for the party members only. Some things never change. The Eternal October our economic and infrastructure planning has helped to tie the nation together. Our commitment to the party has helped ensure that Marxism will reign supreme, and our commitment to the revolution will keep the fires of October burning for a long time to come. Russia will be reunited, the fascists will be purged from the motherland, and we shall rise stronger than ever before. Onwards! 10,000 manpower, is that it? Oh boy. Is that it? Is that all you get? That kind of sucks, man. I want more. I know I'm greedy for wanting more, but still, man. Nice, good job, guys. Over here, um... There you go. Deal with it. We need more manpower, too. Uh, oh, we've learned about better agricultural methods. Please go right ahead. Modern agriculture. Nice. Three, four, five, some. Not bad. Prepare for the Unification War. Dreams of Freedom. Yeah, we can't do that. Sucks, but whatever. If we learned about that, please go right ahead as well. The final conflict. Gonna get all this up. Why are these guys not killing each other yet? It literally makes no sense. Two to three thousand. The an eternal October. Salvin watched from his podium as a military parade commemorating the unification of Russia marched past him. The eternal red October. A new march composed specifically to commemorate reunification. Blasters from, from brass bands. Soldiers in dress, full dress uniform. Gustav passed him in perfect precision. Seemingly more machine than human. These were not liberated workers celebrating their freedom. He mused they were cogs in a vast machine. A machine, of course, of his own making. Tyrants like Yagoda watched every moment and listened to every word of their subjects. Less they questioned their absolute power, but he needed to restrict freedom of expression lest reactionaries and counter-revolutionaries destroyed his revolutionary regime. Th where Yagoda would kill hundreds simply because they questioned his rule, Salva merely imprisoned them for threatening innocent workers and gave them chances for re rehabilitation. And look at Russia now, we thought. Where once a vast array of squabbling reactionary warlords fought amongst themselves, a worker's paradise was built. Where proletarians of all races no longer feared the bombs of the fascists or gunshots of a local thug. Russia was safe now. Russia was, of course, free. But something essential was lost in all that liberation. Sovin realized as he watched the regiments march past him, guns shouldered and the tanks behind him. What was the cost of Red October? Whoa! Whoa! Is this over? What? It's not over yet. Whoa! We didn't even take these guys out yet! Okay, that, is that finished? Okay, maybe that's not finished. Maybe that's, that's a little bugged. We literally didn't even finish this stuff yet. Okay, that's... Uh, I want to do that one. Why not? That's very weird. We finished... We've already finished? Okay, we're done. We're done here. We're done. Let's well, wrap it up. Go home. Just kidding. We're not done yet. Um, That's, that's very odd. I don't know why these guys are not killing each other. I don't want to fight both. I. That's stupid if we have to fight both. I'm not going to fight both of these guys. So, hmm. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. If you want to read about a source of foreign materials, please go ahead. I think I'm going to do some funky stuff off screen and make sure this comes up and does a little better. So, there's all that stuff. And let's go ahead and do some of this so that we can make sure that one of these guys at least wins. All right, everyone. So, I got kind of tired of waiting around. It's 1973. These guys, I, I made your old military district, like, take out Orenberg and stuff like that. So, I thought that was okay, but, like... They just won't kill each other, man. They just won't kill each other. They're out of manpower both sides. Uh, 51 divisions versus that many, but, like, my goodness. Oh, wait, 30 days. So, 30 days, I guess that's how long we have to wait. But here's Valerie, the last sentry. He's looking pretty good. I like that. And he's already on the thumbnail. And if you uh, look looking very closely, you can see a little hammer and sickle over there. But other than that, I've just been hanging out, just making a lot of divisions. As you can see, we have literally 80, 40 combat with divisions. And of course, two tank divisions. So I think we'll do relatively okay against these guys. We're, we're completely out of manpower, which sucks, but you know it is what it is. Effective total manpower modified 169 percent, which is kind of insane to think about. But you know what? I'll we'll gladly take it, man. We'll gladly, gladly, gladly take it. Even though everything else has been doing okay, we're all updated research facilities, which we were on um, rudimentary, but now we're here, which is not bad, but still. We got some better engineering companies. Technology still matters somewhat, but eh. Uh, after low noise amplification, I think we're probably going to... Yeah, actually, we need to get better tanks. <clears throat> as much as I like the tanks, they're just not good enough yet. We, You know what? Screw it. Oh, we have to go... Oh, uh, I wish we could just skip that stuff. Cool. And now we're at war. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. We're at war with both groups, so... I think we'll do okay without even looking, so... Hey, but you never know. 
Especially if they're both divisions, both sides are out of... Kind of, oh my god, come on. There you go, thank god. Alright, so losses. So, that's quite a few losses. I mean, we've waited this long, and they should basically both be dead already, so... Shouldn't be too bad. We've already killed off 50,000 enemies, which is nice, 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 nice. Tanks are just literally just rolling on in. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. And I clip that out too. Cool. Just so we can course some more stuff, so we can go to war with Central Asia and go to war with Germany. So that'll be good. We just need more manpower. Look at all these divisions we want to make. 20 divisions, 20 infantry divisions, uh, four more tank divisions. Just, just super necessary, man. And overall, equipment's looking very good. And once we can pitch these guys, we'll have plenty of equipment for us. Oh my goodness, all these plans, that sucks, I don't want to deal with these things. Interceptors, nah, nah, we're good. But yeah, these guys must have killed each other off so much. Oops, why did they pause the game? I don't ask, I don't know why, but don't ask me. Oh, Orenburg capitulated, yeah, that's right. Um, no. Ongoing conflicts. Final, oh. Well, I guess we'll never know. It's alright though, it's alright. At least those guys are dead for now. You guys come over here too. I'll kill them off. Because since they're gone, it's weird that, that this was bugged bug where they couldn't, like, just kill each other and have one big old enemy. Well, I guess our two sides kill each other off, but whatever. Um, yeah, other than that, not much else has really happened. We wanted to do reunify the motherland as well, but uh, they were really close to taking out Samara. They were really close, but they just couldn't make it for some reason. Alright, 12,000. They've got the 14 divisions. We have 82 divisions, which is not bad, of course. We've got to course some stuff, but. Central Asia will definitely have, well, it must be ours. So this way we have enough divisions to guard against the entire line here. Um, Iran, I don't think, has joined. We have the UAS, United Arab States here, but not the Imperial State of Iran. They're independent. Uh, they might join, though. Oh, look, also, Imperial Guard, yeah. Yeah. That's not good. Oh, they're actually attacking us, look at that. Huh. Go figure, they're actually attacking us. Anyone have upgrades? Nah, sort of. Actually, you, you're a good tank general. Ah, eh, but we already have this guy over here on doing tank stuff, whatever. Doesn't really matter too much. Give him some time, and they've already lost 64,000, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, you guys aren't going. Just go in, guys, go in. Whenever you can. And since we're waiting here anyways, like, and quartering these guys, super important. All that extra manpower. Super, super important. How many divisions have left? Six and nine still. 70,000 dead. That's not enough. Come on, keep killing them. Don't give up. Don't give up, guys. Don't give up. Five days left. Come on. Please, please, please. Just, just go. Just, just go. Straight for the capital. Straight for it. 66,000. Eight divisions max. And we should have a lot more manpower after we record all that stuff, but I guess not. Well, that kind of sucks. We do have more military factories, which is pretty good, though. Uh, are we missing anything here? Not too much, no, actually. It's actually not too bad. Which I kind of figured we'd be okay on military factories. We've already made quite a few of them, so. Mm. I guess do that, maybe? Cool, boosted the budget some more, perhaps? Oh, yeah, that one too. Making a lot of those things, which is okay. Make a lot more of this stuff, too. Loads of civvies. Technology is nice and all, but... Ooh, do we do capitulate them? Oh, looks like we did. No, that's, no, we did not yet. Soon, China just modernized, that's all. Cool. Grab some of that, too. More civvies for the economy. Because we already have max... We have as many military factors as needed, so... Nice. And eventually... We're definitely going to need to do this a little bit more as well. Hopefully the enemies have been building up more rubber refineries, but I kind of doubt it. It would be really nice to have more rubber refineries, I'll be honest. Or synthetic refiners, not rubber refineries. But basically the same thing to me. Good. How are they not capitulated yet, man? 100,000 more dead. Still not enough. Main battle tanks, nice. Grab the next one next. Thank you. And we'll do APCs after that. Great. Are we importing anything we don't know? Just a little more rubber. Just a little more rubber. Bros, just go to Vyadka. Come on, man. Uh, give him a recon as well. That'd be good. Come on. Like, Angles is ours. Oh, Nega would be nice. They've got to be close. They're, they're, they're basically dead, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're literally dead. Yay! And let's see if we can have the super event that hopefully doesn't get copyrighted by YouTube. <coughs> I 
a new Russian revolution, a specter something Europe. Lenin lives again. Cool. And we got that page again, but we're not done yet. We got a few Central Asian states to take out real quick first. So you guys head down here. Um, you guys can come over. Really, probably a really bad idea to throw you around here, but whatever. We'll do it anyways because we can. Because we need time. Because we have a lot of manpower now. Not nearly as much as we'd like, but we need more. Um, invade Finland would be good, actually, as well. That does increase the amount of border we need to secure against certain people, but that's alright. It's alright. Once we get those core, like, once we have all of Western Russia, like, core. Oh my gosh, that's so much manpower. Once we get there, once we get there. Level 10 out of 10 infrastructure. Very nice. Very, very nice. Recon 3s would be very good. It is 74, of course. So, can we do anything else here? I want to. I do want to throw some more stuff off here as well. Get some... Actually... Get some anti-air, maybe. I don't normally use it, but maybe we'll get some anti-air, actually. I try that. <coughs> Excuse me. There you go. Try that. If it's outdated, I don't really care. All right, more tanks. Yes, please. Even though they might be very garbage, that's okay. Uh, Finland, yes. And Central Asia, yes, that's fine too. Yay! We're claiming all Russia, one nation at a time. We have to be peace for that, so we'll do that one soon. Uh, you guys go in. You're doing relatively okay. That's fine with us. What do you mean deploy units? Oh, these, oh it's the infantry too. Nice. Manpower is not enough. I'd like to continue developing our advancement stage. Very good. And Finland has up to 20 divisions. Uzbekistan is almost gone, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Can make more divisions because, like I said, I do want at least 100 here. It's a very good goal to have. And then, oh, wait, okay. yes. Kyrgyzstan, yes, 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 yes. Y'all are done. Come over here as well. Um, I'll have you guys just kind of hang out wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. Or we'll have them placed up here against the Norwegians. That could also work very well as well. 40s. Because the enemy is going to have so much anti-air. So, Or just aircraft, not anti-air. Wait, you don't even have... Oh, shnikes. There you go. Good luck. Uzbekistan is gone. Good. Core them. <clears throat> Nice. Ashgabad. Yes. Good. Integrate. I wonder if we can get... Can we actually get Vladivostok? That's awesome if we can. That's really awesome. Man, we are just demolishing Finns left and right. I love it. Turkmenistan is almost gone too. Oh, oh, and they're gone. As they should be. <coughs> Excuse me. A little cough here and there doesn't hurt people too badly. Just sometimes just enough, though. We'll get to where you need to be. And you guys just go in. Just, just go go all the way in if you possibly can. Helsinki would be nice this time of year. And Turkey as well. Military boost. Keep, keep boosting. There you go, nice. Uh, that's eight, so you do that. There you go. Not bad, not bad at all. Better tanks, awesome. Got some better APCs as well. Oh, not IVs. We want this one. That's good. Um, there you go. There you go. Because we'll need another group here as well, just hanging out, holding the lines against enemies here. So like, literally, like right there. That's it. That's literally your only job. Go and train both of you for now. That's fine. Uh, Badma Zabon. Oh, and there goes Finland. Kola and these groups. Oh, look at this. Are they actually under us now? Yes, they are. Look at that. TV Aura. Well, actually, maybe not. They're not. That sucks. German military attaché. That doesn't make any sense, but whatever. Okay. There you go. That's better. Uh, integrate those guys. You guys are fine. 
Yeah, hang on back at me just a little bit. You f you guys. Oh, it sucks. This I don't know why it's designed like this. This is this is the suckiest part probably. Cuz the initial push will be generally pretty okay. But past initial push, it's going to be really god awful. They just have so much manpower you got to kill. There you go. Good luck guys. You're going you're going to need it. Wow, we have only 53,000 manpower left. Oh, that sucks. That sucks so much. Negotiate? Why not? Approaching the sphere. After several weeks of chaos in the outer Manchuria and growing tension between the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics and Dai Nippon Taikoku, the Japanese have finally approached the government and has asked what that we meet in the city of Beijing to discuss the future of outer Manchuria. With the government eager to regain the occupied East Far East from the Japanese, we have agreed to meet them and have sent our top diplomats to negotiate with the Japanese. What were they like? Invade the Reich? We begin. Let the negotiations begin. Look at that. <coughs> the fourth power. Not bad. The issue of Bero Bidzan. The Bero Bidzan Oblast has been the source of partisan movement in Ottoman Manchuria, who have been battling the Japanese occupation or their homeland since the illegal annexation of the territory in the late 40s. The land is the majority of Russian province who wish only to return to the warm embrace of the motherland. With the return of Bero Bidzan, a large chunk of the Russian partisan movement would go along with it. I'm sure they'd be happy to have it off their hands. Is that right here? Or this area? Oh, uh, yeah. It's probably this one, yeah. I, I'll gladly take it. I will gladly take it off your hands. Agrees. As many expected, the Japanese have agreed to peacefully return the Bero Bidzan Oblast, stating that it would be in the best interest to do so. With the issue of the country or the area now concluded, we are presented with two more options. We could end the negotiations here, or perhaps we could test our luck and see if we can retake the city of Karbarovsk. Push for us. Uh, you know what? Let's see what happens. I want to see if I can actually get that. I love how Ulan, Ulan Ud is still our capital, but let's save the game. And hopefully we can get that too. Because I want as much territory as possible. Like, obviously, we want as much territory before we go to war with the Germans or the evil Teutons. But we'll see. Invade the Reich. I want to invade the Reich. I, trust me, I do. I really, really do. But we need a few more divisions first before I feel comfortable really doing that. It's more Robert, too. That's good. They propose a compromise. Unlike Gabiro Bidzans, Japan is not as eager to hand over the Kar uh, Kabarovsk. They've insisted to propose, uh, propose a deal instead. In exchange for handing over Kabarovsk, they have asked they maintain their resource rights in Outer Manchuria and gain access to the tungsten reserves of the Magadan Oblast. Yeah. I'm okay with that. It's fine with me. They were to agree. After some negotiations, the Japanese have finally agreed to return Kabarovsk and Outer Manchuria to the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Our diplomats have celebrated this victory as much of what was stolen by the Japanese will now be peacefully returning to Russia, where, of course, it belongs, because I definitely don't want to invade Japan. We have no navy. No. Oh, oh, we can do that one too. You know what? Let's talk about Vladivostok as well. Because you know what? If we can, we might as well, right? We might as well. Cool. You can have the resource rights, that's fine with us, as long as we get the territory back, that'd be great. And, what do they say? Uh, or Japan refuses. Japan has refused to hand over the port city of Vladivostok, stating it was an important city for the Empire and essential in maintaining their superiority in the Sea of Japan. They would not simply hand it over to the USSR. Should we just take the stock of what we've signed in the treaty, or should ask them if they were willing to make a deal for Vladivostok? Com propose a compromise. Propose, propose a compromise, why not? Uh, that's a bit too much, I don't want to have that much rubber outage. I'd rather have this one. They propose, hey, they propose a compromise. After some thought, the Japanese diplomats have proposed the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics, a compromise they find reasonable. Japan is still going through an oil crisis that has handicapped their economy for some time. In exchange for the return of Vladivostok, the Japanese are asking for access to Siberian oil reserves to support their economy, as well as a safe passage of the Congo residents to Manchuria. What? Bro, if we can get, if we can get that, that'd be just so good. Um, oh, so you're just over here. You, don't even, you can't even come over there. That kind of sucks. So actually, just in case then, hang out here. 
After ten days of tense silence from the Japanese diplomats, the Japanese have agreed to return the city of Vladivostok back to the USSR. The news has been celebrated by our government as our nation's goal in the Far East have finally been achieved. A victory for us! Huzzah! 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 And actually having this over here, this group over here, will help us prepare just in case for enemies to attack us, so... That'll be very good. So... The Treaty of Beijing, look at this. With the negotiations now concluded, the time has come to sign the Treaty of Beijing. Through peaceful means, we have achieved our goals and retaken the occupied Far East. With the signing of the treaty, we will see its reintegration into the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Millions across Russia have gathered on the streets in celebration and are eagerly waiting to welcome our Russian brothers and sisters back into a warm embrace of our glorious motherland. A victory for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Look at that. That is beautiful. We actually got this area back. That is so good. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Uh, wrong righted. Well, I'll tell that to the Chinese. Anyways. Uh, let's get some of these guys here too. Yeah, get some radar. Definitely get some radar here. Alright, we definitely need some planes. Like, if we don't have planes, we're kind of screwed. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh boy. At least get them a, f a hundred planes for each group here, right? At least. Jet fighters... I'll get some better ones soon. Cast, that'd be good to get. Two. Um, we're already here. Let's make sure our armor is actually relatively okay-ish. For oh my gosh, now that's okay-ish to me. Uh, stop training and just get ready to go. We're out of manpower, so. Don't think we'll be able to make any more divisions, but, you know, I could be wrong. And we need all that extra manpower for right now, basically. Three. Two. One. Well, oh wait. Did I forget about that? No, Iran is not at war with us yet. But look at that. That's so good we got that back. Oh my goodness. So good. Alright, so now. Can we go to war with you guys as well? We already war with you all. That's good. That's actually very, 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 very good. I don't know why it's like that, but whatever. Oh, this front line is going to suck so hard. No turning back now. No, no, no. Wow. Literally just blitzing through here. Nice. Very awesome. Better anti air. We've lost 8,000 versus 175,000 already. Ooh, we are encountering some actual German resistance now, so which really sucks. Our own things have been cut off. But whatever. I'll get back up there. <coughs> They'll be fine. Not worried about it. Not really too much, though, at least. Uh, make sure you go all the way down there. And just go. We're taking as much fuel as we possibly can, so that's not bad. How can you not win against 40 combat widths, man? Well, they just got killed off. What the heck? Alright, well, I guess it's time to exterminate with extreme prejudice. Um, alright. These frontline systems in Hoi 4, I swear to God, man, they just do not make sense. We've lost 60 th some thousand, which honestly is not bad. Come on, guys, keep going. <sighs> stop it, stop it, stop it, you ding dongs. Take out Norway if you possibly can. That'd be good, 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 good. I'm honestly, just like, go here. We're literally just going to add you to the line. There you go. And there you go. You guys are stranded for now, which sucks, but whatever. Get him back out. Get him back out. Guys, I need you to attack, please. 
We've only killed 300,000 of them. That's not enough. By far not enough. Watching back over the river. Germany has how much manpower? Our stability is really bad, actually. Holy crap. Borman's looking old. Oh, he's got two to three million. Before he less than a hundred. Less than a million. We could start a nuclear war. We gotta wait. I mean, overall, I think we're still doing quite well. Oh no, we need that budget boost. Keep boosting it up. That'd be good. Come on, encircle them, guys. Encircle them. Come on. Oh, you're supposed to encircle them. Sur surrenders. Wait, what? Uh, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, this is a glitch in the game, probably. Uh, let me save it real quick, just in case. Because that doesn't make any sense. What do you mean by Comey surrenders? That literally makes no sense for us. Okay, I just want to make sure that they didn't actually screw anything up here. Hey, we saved these guys. Nice. Teach them, of course, and how heavy armor works. So all these guys have got to be running out of equipment here. They've got to be. Or at least manpower or something. Because this is, this is just absolutely brutal fighting. But we're doing quite well. I'm not going to lie. We're doing a little better than I thought we actually would. And these guys are doing... I'm so glad I actually remembered to do stuff up here. Ah, so much better than what I've done in the past, so. But, like, seriously. Keep it up. We're beating a lot of the Reich's soldiers. 200,000 losses versus 800,000. Not bad. Oh, we can just start capitulating some of them. Just a small number. Not that big of a number, but a small number. Go here. Capitulate them. Cut them off. Kill them off. That's all I want. Come on. Oh. Hey, look at that. Beautiful. Brasichstadt would be a great addition to our crown jewels. We could start a nuclear war, but I don't want to do that one. Complete German... Whoa. Yeah, that's all we need. Hopefully, that's all we need. Come on. Lenin... Hey, they flipped to Leningrad. Nope, that's not all we need. God dang it. That sucks. We already took their fuel from Baku, so... I think we still own it, but we'll see what happens. That amount of manpower is kind of concerning to me. It's fine. I'll get down here. Cut, literally just cut them off. We lost a few more tank divisions. That sucks. But they're expendable. They're tanks. But now these divisions are really going to die down here, hopefully. We are overrunning them still by quite a bit. Oh my god, please don't naval invade us. For the love of god, I hate naval invasions. Oh my god. Oh! Calcasin is, is gone. Nice. Okay, so you come over here. You three come over here and form a new group. You son of a guns. No, don't train. Who the click? Heck, click it on train. Get your fat buttholes back over there, boys. How can you not win here? Seriously, overpowered Germany. No, not that overpowered. We're just underpowered. We've killed off a lot of enemy divisions, though. Like, down here is beautiful. Okay, so if that's the case, you guys are done. I need to call you back up here, because this is going to look really bad. Nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Grab some of that, too. Come on. Can someone just capitulate here? Take Moscow. For the love of God, take Moscow. Moskva. Hey, we got him. Nice. Even though we didn't... Ooh, we still... We lost it. They offer Western Russia. After weeks of intense fighting across Eastern Europe, the GGR has offered us a solution to end the conflict in exchange for peace between our nations. The Germans have offered us the Russian-majority lands of Muscovy. The government is divided on whether we should continue our war against the Reich and end the conflict while we maintain advantage over Germany. Nope. We're not going to go until either the Teuton is dead or we are dead. Actually, I don't know about that. We'll see what happens. We'll literally see what happens. I'm not really sure yet. Just don't let them expand too much, because we're doing very... Well, oh, the upper. With Leningrad and Voroshilov grad back into Russian hands, the Germans have approached the government once more with another offer of peace. They, pre they are prepared to hand over all of Muscovy in exchange for peace between us and them. Once more, the government is divided, but much of our high command feels we can continue our great advance towards the heart of the Reich, and raise the banner of the motherland over the ruins of the Voxala. Onwards to Germania. Seriously, take the goddamn son of a gun capital. You dinguses, you gotta keep moving. They offer Caucasia. As the soldiers dig ever deeper into the dark heart of the Reich, the Teutons have approached. Our government once again, this time they offer the prize Reichs Commissar at Caucasia and the port city of Rostov in exchange for peace. Our government has signaled their support for the deal, calling for Valerie Sablin to accept the 
peace with Germany, but some generals in our staff, vengeance is not yet fulfilled, and I propose we continue our advance and push for Austin and Ukraine. Back to the border. No if and or buts. Ah, Ruslan is gone, as well as a large majority of their army. Boys and girls, please, please, just, just eliminate them. You're going to kill them off, whether you like it or not. These guys are out of supplies, so I don't know what the heck you're doing. <coughs> this is going a lot more smoothly than, than I've had, had had in the past. A lot more smoothly. Look at this. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at this. Oh, yeah, look at all those divisions. Oh, yeah, I'm not even paying attention too much anymore, but like, holy crap, this is really good. We call this the pocket. What pocket is this? Is there, is there a town? The... Vizama? Vizama pocket? Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, no, no. Do not let them get in. Do not cut them. Cut them off. Cut them off. Cut them. Cut, cut these guys in place. Good, good, good. You both literally go right here. Oh, yeah. They tried to break free. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. That's so good. Oh, yes, please. Just get the next one. I don't care. How many? Oh, please. Okay, we got 2.29 million. Not bad. Not bad. Guys, you're wasting time. Come on. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. You're wasting supplies, too. We're going to force the attack here, you son of a guns. Nice. Kiev and Lidlan. A complete German surrender. We can't go all the way to Germania, which really sucks, but whatever. It's fine. You son of a total biscuit lover. We're not going to stop. Oh, we got Ukraine! There you go. Just more armor. Just, just... We have so much more manpower. What? Why? Why do we have so much manpower? It doesn't make any sense to me. At this point, we've lost half a million. But they've lost 2.7 million. Like, that's insane. Like, they're still... I mean, it's maybe not that insane, but they're still putting up a good fight. They have a lot of millions in reserve still as well. We want to... I don't think we'll actually be able to take out Germania, which would, would be... I mean, don't get me wrong. I want to take out Germania. The two towns need to die, but... Bro. Bro. I'd love to. I would absolutely love to, but... That'll end up in nuclear warfare, and we don't want nuclear warfare right now. We want to be successful in this campaign. Uh, that's, not, that's not bad either. It's not great because of supplies, but whatever. Actually, 40s. There you go. That should have at least a little bit, right? Where are you at? Oh, Austin is gone as well. Oh, we need a little That's fine. Riga, please. Nice. No one has upgrades. It's kind of surprising, I'll be honest. Nice. You guys are doing all right. Alright, so I think this is as far as we can probably go without them wanting to nuke us. So here are the casualties. 3 million versus 600,000. 5 to 1 casualty ratio. I am very pleased with that, my friends. And we even broached into Norway, too. The Treaty of Riga, our staggering advance in the lands of the Reich, has stunned the globe. The Germans especially. The Germans have approached our government with an offer. To avoid nuclear war, the Germans are prepared to accept our Eastern European claims on the condition that Germany proper would be left untouched by the treaty. Tell Germania we accept. Oh, this is beautiful, my friends. Not bad. Valerie Sablin, Mr. Authoritarian Socialist, has saved Russia and more. We have Ukraine. We have the Baltic states. We even have probably a Belarus as well. And of course we have, we should technically have Finland under our belt, but whatever. Now that is beautiful. The fate of Vyborg. What does that do? Oh, a little bit of lag. Oh, hold on. Uh, I can't click on that. Okay. Oh, okay. The city of Vyborg was won by the Soviet Union back in 1940, when the Red Army's troops triumphed over the Finnish troops. Although the city was eventually retaken by Finland during the Great Patriotic War, many of our generals believe that with Leningrad back in the hands of the Union, uh, of the Soviet Socialist Republics, we should put some distance between Finland and Leningrad and retake what is rightfully ours. Why do we not... Wait, why do we take that now? That literally makes no sense. Jimmy surrenders. Heroes of humiliation finally over. A 
Ultra should have born. This is dumb. This is... Well, we literally took him out. So this should happen beforehand. Decrease in poverty, though. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. A toaster economist. 15%. Beautiful. That's fine. We can... Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's so nice. Turret range finders. Yeah, we're going to lose this one. I'm just going to use Consequence Annex Finland. That's stupid. This should not be happening. This literally should not be happening. So, I, I, I don't understand what the... I think it's just glitched. Not glitched. The devs haven't just addressed it yet. Probably. That's probably what's up. That's just probably what's up. Um, can you, Could you go any slower? Like, seriously, guys. I know you're 40 combo with and you got a little... I'm not reading that. Screw that. Look at all the console commands I used earlier. Screw the fins. Screw them to hell and back. But, hey, I think that's going to be it for us here, my friends. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous... Rest of your day.